Welcome, everyone, to the kickoff episode of E-Commerce Roast, powered by Build, Grow, Scale. I am one of your hosts, James Backenstos, and with me is my esteemed colleague and friend, Mr. Alexander Nikolaski. Alexander, you would like to introduce yourself real quick? What's up, everybody? Alex here from Build, Grow, Scale, revenue optimization expert. We've been doing this with James here for over five years now, and we're super excited to shoot the shit here and have some fun with you guys. Absolutely. Um, speaking of shooting the shit, it's going to be a little bit more structured than just shooting the shit between me and Alex, although I know everyone would love to hear those conversations, but that's for another time. Um, so what we're going to be doing in our e-commerce roast is we're going to be breaking down the good, the bad, the ugly of the most popular e-commerce stores and some of the most unpopular ones. Um, we'll be going through site optimization as far as how the site functions on the front end, home pages, collection pages, and so on through the funnel, as well as we're going to be doing some product unboxing and some email flow and campaign critiques um, throughout this series. So we hope you guys can get a lot out of it. The topics that we are going to cover will be applicable to most e-commerce stores and help you increase your revenue. Yeah. Alex, do you have anything else to say or should we just jump right into it? Let's let's just get into it. Fantastic. And today we are going to be roasting the um, up and coming popular women's fashion brand Sheen. So without further ado. All right. This is obviously Sheen's homepage. Alex, what's the first thing that pops into your mind when you see this site? So I'm not familiar with this brand at all, by the way. I have not seen this. So these will be totally unscripted. We'll just go with the flow. The first thing that popped in my mind is that huge 90% off banner right in my fa face. And <laughs> <laughs> the big issue with that is whenever you have such a... By the way, I've never seen a 90% sale period anywhere before. It makes people suspect the brand, right? Unless they know it and they're returning customers, right? We are speaking about this mostly from somebody that doesn't know the brand, from new customer, new visitor. 90% off makes me think like, what is wrong with their product? <laughs> Why are they marking them down so much? Are they like, uh, I don't know, they're not stitched well or whatever. So generally speaking, we never recommend doing more than 30% sale. And if you do more than 30%, you have to justify it somehow. Give people a logical reason why you're giving them such a steep discount. Maybe you have like a clearance or inventory clearance or whatever. It doesn't matter as long as it makes logical sense. So they don't feel like something is wrong with your products right yeah the 90 percent almost seems like you're it's cheap you're selling me some cheap knockoff you know apparel made in china by kids wish.com like <laughs> oh yeah right wish.com 95 percent off today only um also it's got a little bit of a confusion with the the 90 percent off banner that's obviously right in your face and then um in one of the uvp images above that banner it takes it says take an extra 15 percent off so I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but 90 plus 15 is 105% in, in all mathematical equations. Um, so are they just going to, they're they paying me to take the product? I mean, it seems that way. That's, that's a great point, James. You never want to stack multiple different sales like this because you're going to confuse people. Which one am I going to get? How am I going to get the 90% off? You're essentially making them think, which is something that you never want to do, okay? Optimization and everything that we do is all about removing confusion and, as we call it, friction. So they just flow through their shopping experience as quickly and as easily as possible, right? Correct. Yeah, clarity trumps persuasion all day long. Exactly. Um, and this is very, very busy above the fold. Um, I don't know even where to look at. And there's some primary uh, purposes of a homepage. When you land on a homepage, the top thing that you want to convey to your buyers as soon as they land is what you're selling, right? Um, and me knowing this brand before, I know they sell kind of apparel. But if I was completely unaware of what this brand is, like you are, Alex, would you know that they sell apparel by landing here? 
just from looking at that image, maybe, but it, I have no other idea, like what kind of apparel. I mean, looking at the ninety percent off, I'm thinking Wish.com or H and M type <laughs> of apparel, but I have no idea, right? Hey, what's wrong with H and M? I wear H and M. Also, I mean, they could be selling balloons for all I know. <laughs> right, right. Jane doesn't tell me much, like what type of product they're selling, their their brand name. I mean, I'm not saying it should tell me, but I, I it's not clear. Right. right, and that's right. why we talk about having a clear, unique value proposition. Uh, that brings up another good point. That would be the second thing that you should show above your fold on your homepage. Right, is your unique value proposition. What exactly? What items of your brand do you offer that puts you apart and stands ahead of the competition? Yeah, and again, this comes uh, like it plays a much bigger role with new visitors, new customers that they're not familiar with the brand, right? Those are the most prone to bouncing off of your website, the ones that don't know you, right? Returning customers, if they bought once, they're ready, kind of learn how to deal with all of the stuff that it's not good on your website. So unique value proposition is mostly for new customers. And again, the, the more known your brand is, the less you have to worry about unique value proposition. Apple doesn't need a unique value proposition. Obviously, no, not at all. Right? They put products out and people just buy them. Okay. However, if your brand is not very known, and that's the case for the vast majority of e-com, the average store owner, you need to pay a lot of attention on unique value proposition. What's this store about? The moment they land on the page, they should be able to get this within a split second. Right? What's, what is the store selling? And why would somebody buy from the store instead of any other store, H&M, Zara, whatever, okay? Right. And well, the value I see from this store is it's dirt cheap. Everything, there's discounts yeah. and free shipping and get an extra 15% off here, 90% off, 15% here, free shipping here, free shipping here, free shipping here. Yeah. It's, it I just mean, screams, I'm going to buy junk. That's what exactly. it screams to me. And unless your business model is being the cheapest person in the game, let's, for example, Walmart, and you can do it like with the help of economies of scale, then by all means, but that there's no benefit of being the second cheapest. Okay. <laughs> no. It just helps you devalue your brand and it's, and it's a race to the bottom. Second place is the first loser. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, um, anything else about the fold you see? Anything else about the fold on the same note, what you said, it's too busy. We have this thing called the hierarchy, visual hierarchy of focus. Uh, that's what essentially means is just a fancy word of saying what elements on this page above the fold, which is exactly what we're looking here, which element stands out the most. The way our brain works is whatever is more prominent, our brain prioritizes it as more important. Okay, so too many things stand out here. The main banner, the 90% off, the four things above it, the uh, free standard shipping on orders, which it took me a minute to find it. And then the navigation kind of gets lost in it instead yeah. of the navigation being the most prominent thing. And then the search bar, it's practically invisible. Okay. That's a great point with the search bar. I was actually going to go there because we've, We've tested endlessly on search and we always use amazon.com as kind of like, you know, the example, the, golden, the example, right. And they blast the search bar in your face as much as they possibly can, because people that search your site on average convert five to seven times higher than the ones that don't search. Um, and it depends it from brand to brand, up. but sure. that's on the higher end, but for sure, definitely at least three times or more. Right. Um, and I've never seen this, Alex. Have you ever seen a um, search placeholder search terms toggle like that? It just doesn't make much sense to me. It's a distraction, especially with this blinky thing up here. Um, uh, why not just have a placeholder that's solid instead of it toggling through? Um, yeah, I've never <laughs> seen the. I mean, we kind of pioneered putting keywords in the search bar, the most popular ones, but I've never seen like uh, changing or whatever keywords like that. Right. No, that's new for me. And I'm not sure why I would want to search hashtag Sheen, but 
they're, yeah, they're right? offering it for me. <laughs> and on this <laughs> website, just looking at the main navigation, it seems they have a lot, big selection of products, so search will be critical. So this search needs to be huge and very, very prominent. I actually don't mind their mega menu. I feel it's broke down fairly good. Um, with fashion brands, um, I've had the liberty of working on some big ones over the last five, six years. And what I've noticed with a lot of the, the, the popular fashion brands is they offer an endless amounts of categories similar to what you're seeing here. Um, and the key to that is, is to break it down in the most user-friendly experience possible and with some images so you're not just looking at text, right? Because no one wants to stare at a wall of text. Right. Um, and some, I mean, aside from the, the animated GIFs, I don't like that. It's distracting, especially with those images in particular. But um, <laughs> a lot of images in a, a mega navigation like this, I like that a lot, actually, um, minus the, the the ones that are flickering in my face. But I agree. Um, so I don't mind this, given the amount of products that they're selling as far as uh, product types. Yeah, and considering their huge selection, this makes the not just the prominence of the search bar, but its actual functionality even more important. Like, does it work with, does it suggest most popular keywords? Does it account for spelling mistakes? How is the search page results? Do they have good filters on the search page? All of, search page, all of that stuff is super important on a brand that has such a huge selection. And we know this for a fact because we've worked on some stores that have upwards of 5,000 SKUs and the search is exponentially becomes more important on those stores with more products. Absolutely. And speaking of search, how about we just search something and see what happens? Now, I wonder if those are, yeah, I mean, it seems like those are the most popular terms, shoes, phone cases, earrings. I mean, they yeah, could be. I or like could the little not. flame. That, that brings some mm -hmm. uh, visual hierarchy to your. So you can, this is what you can do with search terms as well. So you can use the most popular search terms and get it utilized more, or you can use it to promote products. Like um, say you're running a sale on shoes. You could do shoe placeholders in there and drive people to your shoe collection when they land on your homepage as well. There's a lot of different approaches that you can do to a search. Um, yeah. But typically speaking, it's the most popular search terms. And you can get those by um, Google Analytics puts up together great reporting on most popular search terms, as well as if you're using an internal search app, those usually have pretty good reportings on what's being searched on your site. That's a great uh, point, actually, James. The search terms, that's a gold mine when it comes to your store. So quick backstory, there's this store that we managed that we were partners on couple of years back that had a specific keyword that was the most searched terms for like seven months in a row. And we did not even have that product offered on the store. So what did we do? We went to our manufacturers. We created a prototype. We did them a couple of iterations and then we launched that most searched product on the store. And we had, I believe, $486,000 weekend on Amazon Prime with that product alone, just by looking at the search term. So always keep in mind what people are searching for because it could be your next biggest winner. Even if you have one or two products, you should always look at your search term. It could be your next million dollar product in there. Absolutely. Utilize your customers to your advantage. They're going to tell you what they want. You just need to figure out how they're telling you. Yep. Those are the most valuable, one of the most valuable customers, one of the most valuable segments because they have buying intent and they're searching for something. So that's all gold. Right. Yeah. <sighs> I would, we... I, like the single most change I would make above the fold on this store would be making that search bar prominent and in your face. And obviously get rid of the 137,000% off product offers. 100%. <laughs> so I guess we didn't mention the navigation. Again, I don't know anything about this brand, but in most cases, you want to focus your navigation on the 80-20. Only show the items that generate 80% of your revenue. Don't show everything. Don't show 
edge case products that you can only sell three times a year for from okay it's just distracting absolutely so, so we, we go to a to collection go. page yeah i mean i guess we can point out three top things on each page sure so these don't run too long yeah absolutely pick a collection any collection alex we'll go that's to whatever one here. that's Ooh. the first thing i noticed fantastic okay All right. oops um my initial thought this is fairly clean um i don't mind the initial lander of it i don't know how it functions yet but i know where i'm at it shows a heading i might be able to make this a little more prominent um to know where i'm at but I can see filters. Um, that's probably the most important part on a collection page, in my opinion. Agreed. Especially if you have a lot of products, you want to be able to limit the the customer's options as much as you can by their choice, not by your choice. So having the customer choose what they want to see is very important. One hundred percent. That's probably the most important thing on a collection page. One thing I would, I guess, two things to begin with. It takes like half the page 50% is like without showing any products, right? Almost more than 50%. So I would reduce that empty space above the products and the filter. So that could be a little bit more compact. The other thing is while I love the filters, typically you only want to show either horizontal filters or vertical, but not both at the same time because there will be some confusion there. Wait, if these are filters at the top, what are these on the left, right? So either right. one or the other. And you don't want to do top horizontal level, uh, horizontal filters if you have too many, okay? Like this store seems to have. You always want to do a left-hand side. Like just go to bestbuy.com. They have one of the best filter implementations that I've seen. Uh, yeah, only time I've seen a horizontal work with a vertical was um, we managed and partnered with with a sporting brand. And what they did was they had print on demand T-shirts broken down into like sporting categories, basketball, oh, baseball, yeah. soccer, football. And they were able to sort by the uh, sport at the top horizontally. And then the vertical on the left, they could do color, size, price, et cetera. Um, so it does work well, but it's a very, very small. Contextual. Yes, contextual. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Um, yeah, because I don't know what any of these even really, what's a boho mean? Um, yeah. That's I don't the know. Other... I guess that could be a woman thing. Yeah. They, they might know it. That, that's the key thing with filters. They have to be things that your audience cares about and they understand what they mean, right? Absolutely. If they don't know what boho is, it's just a distraction. It's confusing them. Uh, scrolling down, let's get to the products. Um, I hover over this, I get the add to bag. Now, this is something that I most recently tested at one of our partner stores. Depending on the product, what you're offering. Um, apparel, I don't think would work well with the quick view, quick add, as that's what we're going to call it. But like, let's say if you're selling comic books, where you don't need much information to buy a product. You don't need to pick a size and the, and the, the material. So like comic books, I want to look at, if I'm going to a comic book store, I'm not just going to buy one, I'm going to buy four or five, and I want to make it easy to buy that on a low ticket item. So on a low ticket item store, I would not recommend, I would recommend to test um, the quick ad. So people can just bang through a comic book collection and add their top five and, and get out. With an apparel store like this, given the amount of options that go into choosing an apparel product, I would not recommend the, the quick ad here. 100%. Can you actually click on that? I'm curious if it's going to add it or it's going to open a quick view thing. Mm. Oh, that's okay. So that's even worse because the problem with this is that most people will confuse this for a product page and they will not even bother clicking through the product page itself. And if they don't find information that they need here and they won't likely find it, they will just ignore the product and move on and they won't realize that it's not the actual product page. Okay. So I would definitely recommend skipping, skipping this at the bag or quick view, which is essentially the same thing here. And it's misleading. It says at the bag, but it's actually the quick view uh, option. It looks like these are wish.com prices, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it does. 
and I can get a club and I can yeah. save more five, more five percent, right? I, I don't, um, you can't find this on AliExpress for sixteen bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's whenever someone clicks a button on your store, no matter what it is, you want it to be very clear as to what that button's going to do. Like Alex just said, it says add to bag on the quick view, but clearly it did not add to my bag. So if I am going to have a, this quick view option, I would say like view details button, because that's what it's bringing up is details. It's not right. adding to the bag. Um, but for this type of product, I wouldn't recommend having it at all. Right. I mean, we we said everything that we don't necessarily not like, but that's probably not working for them. One thing that I do like is uh, if you click that off, they have badges on the products. That new badge, while not very prominent, that could be much more prominent. Maybe with a little circle in the corner. James has done this many times on our partner stores. He's really great at it. The good thing about it is that it's not on every single product. Like I'm sure you've seen this or you might be doing it too. You have sale on every single product and that just does not look good. Badges are meant to, might you want to hover over it, James, so they know what I'm talking about? Right. Yeah, that new badge. So they're meant to make certain products stand out, whether it's a product that's actually new in this case or a product that's on a sale or a product that's like a top seller or best seller. Badges are there to help people make a decision by making some products stand out. But if you have them on every single product, it defeats the purpose and it's just a distraction, right? It's called cognitive load. It's just another thing for that people's brains need to process, and that's not a good thing. Um, another thing that stands out that I think is overused is this Sheen Club badge. Um, oh, my I'm gonna God. Guess that every product in here, well, that one doesn't. Um, I just don't know what that even means. Um, and that was one of my me things. saving more money. <laughs> and yeah, so is it the ninety percent, the fifteen percent, or like <laughs> how, how does it add up? Am I gonna get ninety percent and fifteen percent on top of this? That's super confusing, right? Even <laughs> if we can figure it out, and we've seen thousands, maybe I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but hundreds of stores then the average consumer will not know what that means. Great. Oh, look, we got an 11 down here just to throw you for a loop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we got 11, cool. 5, 90, 25, 19, oh, wow. and okay. then an extra 15 here. And then I just noticed some more icons on the, I don't, look, okay, we can get 15% off by getting an, <laughs> an app too. So on top of the 15 and on top of the 90, right? <laughs> we got four offers for 15, one offer for 90. They're basically paying you to take this. Yeah, that's that's terrible. And it's, it screams like this product is selling way overpriced products, even though they're 15 bucks, 14 bucks, right? Whenever you have so many discounts and you're hammering people with discounts, what you're essentially saying is my products are not worth what they're listed for. And that's right. devaluing your brand. Before we move on, you brought a really good point. Uh, Shen, Shen Club or whatever. If you're audience does not understand this goes to the badges and that's technically a product badge they right. the badges have to be self-explanatory if they need to think or they don't know what it means it's just it's just another distraction it's not helping it's just hurting no there's there's 10 different offers on this page alone i wouldn't know what i would be getting right <laughs> like why would i want five percent when i can get 90 percent or 15 i, I don't there's yeah. no benefit for me joining the club unless it is an additional on top of X, but you don't you don't explain that. I'm not going to know. And typically, especially on the clear. Shopify store, stacking discounts isn't even allowed unless it takes some extra coding. Um, and you don't want to do it, generally speaking, anyways. But I guess if you're going to do it, do it in a club. But this doesn't explain to me anything. If you hover, nothing shows. Nothing has happened. Mm, yeah. I don't know what this is. So at least you need to have, if it's something that's not familiar, at least you should have a little tool tip, as we call it, when people hover over it and it explains what it is, right? And you, you will say whatever it is, extra, extra 9% on top of the 105% they already got. <laughs> Man, uh, we should buy from them. We could actually make money. 
I know, right? <laughs> and what are those buttons that you saw in the bottom right corner? The play um, button? Well, that's one that says I can get another 15% off by using app exclusive with code app only mm -hmm. um, with a QR code. So I'm on desktop and I'm seeing a, a QR code that's for an app for an Android or an iPhone. Um, I guess to download their app. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, download sure. percent off. But if I'm on a desktop, I don't think I'm pulling out my phone to scan the code to to download an app. I'm then just going to get sidetracked on Instagram Reels or TikTok dancing. Yeah, <laughs> very good point. You never want to like direct the user. Like if you're on a desktop looking at this collection page, I don't want to direct them to get off of it to pull out my phone, scan a QR code because the amount of sales you get from that are not going to outweigh the, the customers at Bounce. Right? Yeah. Not, oh, not look, at all. A cat video on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Then you go down the cat rabbit holes and there ain't no coming back from that. <laughs> so I right, like that they jump have to a product the, page or no? Uh, one more thing to mention. I like that they have the color swatches here. I just wonder if the, yep, the color changed, but that's good. On hover. That's good. That's very, it's fast too. It's not, there's no lag. It does it on mm -hmm. hover. Um, and I wonder if that wish list thing makes you sign in, or is it a cookie based? No, let's try it. No, it's gonna make me not sign in. Okay. I as mean, much as I love you, Sheen, I'm not wearing any of your products, so I'm not. I'm not putting it on my wish list. Sorry. Yeah. Guess we can go. No, on one, no one wants to see me in a dress. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's for Halloween. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> All right. So we bounce to a product. Sure, let's do it. Let's pick one with some variants in it. Um, I like this floral dress. It would look cute on I you. mean, we can go much longer on this category page button. Oh, for sure, longer. for sure. Yeah. Um, again, yeah, we we're just pointing some. out the top things that we see um, that we Free. feel that can move the biggest the biggest levers for for not just this store, but things that you could take on to your store when you're watching this, you know, take notes or whatever. These are just some big levers we immediately see. This store is so busy, Alex is right. We could have spent a 90 minute episode on that collection page itself. Yeah. So, and we're gonna, what we're gonna do is sometimes we're gonna roast entire store. Sometimes we're just gonna focus on one single page, either homepage or category page. And on those episodes, we'll go much deeper uh, on that Absolutely. page. Absolutely. So, what do you see here, James? Oh, first. well, the first thing that sticks out to me is the, the, the Sheen Club again. Same. Um, <laughs> that's the first Talk thing about I visual to... hierarchy right <laughs> right so visual hierarchy that when i went on a product page typically i want to see what the product is and the cost i clicked on the product i know what i'm clicking on unless it was an accidental click right the image i think is good um it's a quality image it's a woman in a selfie taking a selfie in a mirror right it's the identity it's the ideal image for the buying for the buyer and and but, check this wording out Sorry for cutting you off. No, you're good. Join for exclusive 5% off, but you <laughs> gave me 90% of the whole thing. How but I can get 50% right here. Oh, well, yeah. So that's <laughs> super confusing. Very. Um, and it, it hurts the brand's trust and credibility. Like, make up your freaking mind, right? What are you going to give me? <clears throat> yeah, you're almost overselling at this point. Yeah. Um. I do like the reviews um, right below the, mm -hmm. the title. Um, there's a thousand of them, so clearly it's a popular product. Let's click it and see what happens. Um, it should smooth scroll. That was a pretty jumpy scroll, so I would really recommend it smooth scrolling down rather than teleport. Um, it makes people but, wonder what happened. Did they go on a different page? If they teleport, if they don't know what happened in the meantime, it just throws them off. And just be smooth scroll, so it, just so everyone knows what it is, it's like if I click that hyperlink, it would then just smooth scroll to that section versus just jumping there with the immediate click. Yeah. Also, I don't feel that like this is a useless, useless content to have. I don't see why any of your customers would want to know what your SKU is. <laughs> I don't unless, think they care. Unless you're a Best Buy with a lot of technical products with very slight deviations between them. Right. We don't need this. I like that their their price stands out. That's actually yep. very well executed price. Your price should always be like very prominent, bold, and big, even bigger than the title, which is the case here. 
that's really good. And yep, I the like only thing that. I would recommend with that would be changing the color because it black is all over the logo, the buttons. Sure. Um, I mean, in that, in that particular case, it does stand out at least to me the most, but it could sure. be a different color too. So yep. it separates from the rest. I like they also have the make four payments, the Klarna in context. However, I would remove that grayish or pinkish or whatever background it is because it looks like another button distracting from the rest of the page. It just should be a line of text and maybe the Klarna logo without background. Yep, agreed. Um, a lot of people that we work with that have lower ticket items like this, this $19 product, um, they don't think that they offer payment plans that they'll be used, but that is the most inaccurate thing based off of the data I've witnessed. I've seen people finance a $10 clearance t-shirt. Um, yep. and if it makes, if the cost and the, the, the percentage to, for you as the business owner to offer that and it can still be profitable. I see no reason not to offer a payment plan on anything as long as it makes feasible sense in the back end for you. I mean, the way they think about it is, well, maybe it's $10 t-shirt, but if I break it down in four, I can buy four $10 t-shirts today instead of wait a couple of weeks until I buy the next shirt. That's, that's their process. By the way, I thought Klarna allows 35 and above. It's surprising that it works for a $20 product. Maybe there's some new update or something. Could be. There's a ton of options. I mean, you have Klarna, Afterpay, um, Shop Shop Payments is now an option. Um, there's a ton, Affirm. There's endless options. So if you're going to do it, I would probably suggest just research it and pick which one. They're all pretty much the same on the forward-facing side. Um, some will run credit checks, some won't. Some will run soft credit checks, some will run hard ones. Whatever makes sense for you and your business, um, that's what I would go with. But they all pretty much function the same. Paradox of choice or the colors. <sighs> yeah, um, there's a lot of options here. Again, I'm not a female. I, I, I shop like a typical guy, black, white, blue. Let's call it good. Um, mm -hmm. But looking at it just from a technical optimization standpoint, for one, it gives me a lot of options. Um, and I can't really tell what these colors really are unless I click on it. Like that's multicolor. I would never think me clicking on that icon, it would be labeled multicolor. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably suggest not using print here and just use solid colors. Um, like I would do a mm -hmm. half and half swatch, half pink, half white. This, these two look almost identical, so I'm not sure why. It looks the same to me, honestly. It is the same. One's cheaper. Oh, who knows why. <laughs> not sure why. I do like that they have that hot thing. I haven't seen it on another yeah. before. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I do like that. So you can highlight your popular variants or what's selling. Um, a little yeah. bit of uh, scarcity. Like, you know, hurry, yeah. almost sold out type thing going on down here, too. Just do keep in mind, if you do that, they will probably get bought more. And I would do that only strategically. Maybe if you have extra inventory and you're trying to get rid of those particular colors or they have a bigger profit margin for you and then you put that hot on it. Agreed. Uh, but I would think those are, this is kind of pushing it with too many colors, five to seven max and seven is pushing it already you want to focus on the 80% as before 80%. I mean, the 20% of your colors to generate 80% of your revenue. And we've had so many of our e-com insiders do this and every single one of them was super resistant. They thought they want to show and sell all of these colors because they're selling, they're selling five times a year. It's just a distraction. You don't want to focus on edge cases, only focus on what people are already buying the most. So I would cut some of these colors to make it more simple. Yep. And the size thing, I'm not sure what this number means next to it. I don't know what the four, six, is yeah. that like the dress size? Is that a woman? It could be a woman thing. I'm not sure. I think that's what it is. I was wondering as gotcha. well, but if women know what that means, great. If they don't, it be <laughs> clarified. I but do I, like this I, hover tooltip. I've not seen that. Yeah, that's very cool. That's a tooltip, by the way, that I mentioned 
on the collection page to do something I like, like that actually Lang that's a good one so it tells you all of the metrics of the dress right oh, that's really cool so and it really tells you the same thing in this Ooh. i really like that icon yeah the size guide that's very well executed right next yep. to the thigh selector where it should be in context and let's check my size too oh i like this so this i would look as a fit finder wizard type thing so i can type oh, in that's what the name actually at the top fit fit finder. Finder. <laughs> so i'm a six foot 125 pound female let's see how it functions Ooh, my belly shape i'm a flat belly woman <laughs> a hip shape wider <laughs> <laughs> so yeah add bra size um sure i'm a 42 double d oh wow mm -hmm. how old ooh, how dare you ask me how old 64. i'm 25 <laughs> i don't know what that matters um i like them tight wow See, size not available <laughs> um so yeah that was me going through just picking you know funny funny things but i like how this functions i this really do very well executed if you have an apparel store this is a great thing to model especially <laughs> if it's real numbers that you show people and it's not just a generic thing that you show to everybody we've used these fit finders and they frequently convert at two digits on when people yeah. use them of course Wow, well, that's very well executed. Good job. Yeah, I like <laughs> that's that. That's clean. Might take that over to one of our partner stores <laughs> and throw them an idea. Another good thing is their add to card or add to bag in this case is the most prominent element here. Although that side get extra thing is kind of distracting. <laughs> <laughs> However, the button. What is that? Text thing? What is this thing? So that's like an opt in. Um, hmm. I'd probably recommend get rid of the sidebar and maybe put it over here as a little widget in the bottom left. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is very distracting over here. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more to talk about, but let's move on because yeah. I think we're getting past 30 minutes here. Great. We'll add it to bag. And that's oh. good that it shows only one left, by the way. That's really good. Did you if see it, what happened yeah. when I clicked add to bag? You missed it. it was no, that quick. I didn't. What happened? I still um, don't see it. <laughs> Hold on. Let me try. Let me find a different product that's actually in stock with something I can add more than one. And this what causes rage one. clicks, by the way. This, this <laughs> was terrible. If if we didn't notice what happened, I mean, James did, but I didn't. Ready? Yep. It just pops in, and when I move, oh, it disappears. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's, that's not a good execution. First of all, we don't recommend you use that uh, drop down card. Ooh, it disappears by itself without me moving too. That that's very bad. If you're gonna use it, at least leave it there for a certain amount of time, at least ten seconds, or make it manual removal. People need to click off to turn it off, but you should never just hide it like that. No, um, it works off of hover, and yeah, I would make it prominent unless I close it or click off. Because if I wasn't paying attention and I didn't see that pop up, I would just sit here and click, like, as Alex said, rage clicking. I'd add six things to my cart, and then I would just get pissed. And all right, yep. we get it. I'll go to wish.com. It seems to function better, and it's about the same price. All right. <laughs> um, so let's go. So that's what we call like an Ajax or fly out or, or draw our cart. Um, we've tested carts extensively um, on all of our partner stores. In the beginning, we've never seen a cart page win versus a, a slide up cart, but things are changing um, as, you know, Shopify evolves and e-commerce evolves. Um, but I definitely would never even suggest testing something that just flies out for two seconds and then disappears. I see no reason that they're even trying it. And it should be, if they're gonna keep this little mini cart, leave it prominent and close when I click off. Yep. So let's just go to the cart page itself. Oh my lord, what is happening here? What is happening? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> it's asking me to sign in with Google. What is this? <laughs> oh wow. This is this is this I don't even know what to do. I would think I just got a virus and I would close off right now. That's exactly I've... how it seems. <laughs> All right, let's just close this one first. And what is this? 
Another discount, Jimmy. Right? Wait, 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 we get 20% off now. We're up to like 135. I don't, what's it doing? Oh, I, I don't know what's going on. Like a, like a tutorial thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can choose where to ship it. That's what it was telling me. Okay, yeah, great. I mean, this is cool, the shipping calculator, but it should not be above, nothing should be above the card content, which is the product. The product that we added should be front and center at the top. The shipping calculator should be in the area where the checkout button is, above the checkout button over there. And it should be small. <laughs> Item summary, I don't get it. What I, don't, I don't know what this is. Yeah, <laughs> definitely it's not. Just, like I can, I don't, I've never seen that before. It's definitely not prototypical. I would just cut that thing at the top and just keep this <laughs> hard content. Right. Um, that is really no need to show payment icons. I mean, it's 2023. If you're not accepting Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover. Yeah. Um, I would just yeah. keep PayPal, Klarna, and Afterpay. Maybe Zip, depending on how many people. But we accept yep. these item payment methods at checkout. <laughs> but don't right. don't just not say at checkout because people will try to click these icons. And they'll start rage clicking them. Mm, I do like the upsell or the cross sell items in here. I like this. I don't know what they're using here. I think it could be executed a little better, but this would be the time where I would want to offer a cross sell item that's related to the product. So with with women um, apparel, like makeup, I think something that's easy to choose that doesn't require sizing and information, right? You don't want them to be offered a detailed product where then they got to bounce out of your cart and go backwards to get info. So it's yeah. more or less like no brainers, um, like lipstick, lip gloss, et cetera, et cetera, where you don't need much info on sizing and whatnot. And this should go also below the main cart, cart content. So agreed. This should be up here. The cart content should be up here. This, I don't know what this even is. Get rid should of die it. a painful death. I don't know. <laughs> um, and yeah, the and then the calculator this... above the checkout button right there. Yep. And I don't see. I don't them. even know if they're using Shopify, Alex. I don't even know. I don't think so. I was just wondering the same thing. I don't think it's that. card. The URL looks. Well, let's let's oh. go to checkout real quick because if it's a Shopify checkout, there's not much for us to do there. Wait. So look, don't. do you see those breadcrumbs? By the way, I was gonna say I like them, but they make no sense. Shopping bag, place order, yeah. And then you pay. So you place the order and then you pay. <laughs> but hold on. I can go to checkout and it's going to send me to here. Okay. Let's can I do go. a guest? I, I don't see anything, James. It's still on the cart. Oh, you're not seeing the pop-up? Nope. Ah, uh, it must be because it doesn't show it with shared screen. It must be like a... um. Who knows? Different type of code. No, it's asking me to sign in or new to scene. Hmm. Earn yeah. points, register, why register? All right, I'm gonna just gonna join with Google here. Bummer, we don't see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I had to create an account in order to move forward. Now Ooh. you see the checkout? Nope. No? Nope, I don't see the checkout. That's terrible, by the way. You should never, ever force people to create an account no, that is terrible. What are you seeing now? Saying it's still the car page. Mm, let's try me sharing again. Because I definitely wasn't on the car page. Now I see the What do you page. see? Home page? Okay. Yeah. A little bag. Let's see what happens when I go to here. Now you see the cart? Yep. I'm going to check out. Now, now you see I the check out? Yep, I see the check okay. out. It must have been maybe a security feature that won't let you record screen. Um, so does it seem like a entry. Shopify store to you? In the no, URL it's totally structure? not a Shopify store at all. Um, yeah, it right. did up until here. <laughs> yeah, they might be redirecting to a different gateway. Homes. Yeah. Um, this uh, is a lot of busyness going on. I did, oh. yeah. Um, so there's... I don't even... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Go I ahead. don't know if you see it the same, but there's zero visual hierarchy here. None of the fields are kind of like the borders are almost invisible on my end, and I only see the save button. Yep. 
right? It should be like uh, micro commitments at this point. So Shopify does it really, really well with their checkouts. You get the customer information, which is name, address, phone number, et cetera, et cetera. Then they move to step two and then you choose your shipping method. And then step three is payment in place order. Um, getting micro commitments from your customers is much easier than trying to get them to fill out this hot mess all at once. So yeah. it's asking me for credit, wallet, credit, gift. I don't know what any of this means. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's this super is, yeah, I would, there's nothing good about this checkout. I see nothing. Yeah. The breadcrumbs are too confusing, <laughs> too many like open coupon fields. You want to stay away from that because now I want to go to Groupon and search for a coupon and I'll probably never well, come. They offer 37 discounts. You got to have a lot of, you got a lot of, I guess fields. I have a lot of fields. You know what I'm saying? That's a valid point. At least <laughs> the, the coupon buttons are grayed out, which is, I guess, a good thing. And then once you put a code in, uh, no, I can't even enter a code. Oh, it's Why completely not? blocked out. Maybe you gotta put uh, your email first. Oh, uh, there, yeah. Let's try it. I don't know why it's even asking me for the country first. Is this a Europe-based site, James? Or you don't? It know? might. Yeah, it's definitely not. Um, I mean, United let's see States. if it's gonna. It should fill out the address automatically. One, two, three, Awesome Avenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. New That's York, a good New thing. York. That's a yep, good that's... execution. It should like fill out the rest like that. Okay, so I can't won't let me enter in a coupon code um until I fill out the shipping address. Mm, so that should be clarified near the coupon right. field. Yep. Otherwise you'll have people bounce. Yeah, and then this wasn't an option before. So obviously they're showing shipping options based off of shipping address. Right. Um so this is what I was saying. They shouldn't have had like these payment methods even shown when mm -hmm. I was entering in my personal info, because what's the point of me picking one of them if I can't pick the shipping method? Exactly. Oh, good. Ooh, pop up in a checkout. You what do you think that. of that? <laughs> Super distracting. So I'll give them credit. At least it was time delayed this time. I and mean, it wasn't. Yeah, that's, that's true. I guess <laughs> it wasn't a exit in town, right? Correct. No, it was timed. It okay. Like. But yeah, you never want to have a pop up. You paid all this money to acquire your customer. They, you paid all this money for development and research, and data analytics to keep them on your site to get them to this point. So why would you want to give them a reason to leave? <laughs> exactly. Um, and the code have... is new four fifteen, which is also right there. So I don't know why you're. In case they didn't see it. <laughs> Ooh, we have a my. They even have a my coupon section. Oh wow! Oh wow! Fifteen ten. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is terrible. The <laughs> coupon execution is terrible on this website. I guarantee you, it's confusing a lot of people without yep. even knowing anything about this brand. Now, James made a really good point. If all of this crap that we talked about that we pointed out was not there. This is actually not a bad execution of the address section. But what is the shopping bag product doing breaking my form, my checkout form in the middle? It, that product should be on the right. Why yeah, is over it right here by the order summary? Middle? Yeah, right. on the order summary. So that should be gone from there. I like how they executed the address. It auto fills it. You just put the street address and fills out the rest of the fields and he still gives you the ability to edit if it's not accurate. And then progressive disclosure, as James said, just like the shipping methods showed automatically, same thing should happen with the payment methods as well, because otherwise it seems too overwhelming. Progressively yes, showing the right information at the right time is what it means. Yeah, I don't even know where to really go in here. Like I couldn't enter a coupon code at first, but then I could, but I had to put my shipping address in first. But then we're back to the sheet. There's just a lot going on here. Um, I understand. Wanna... Go ahead. Good. Nope. I was going to say, if you, somebody wants to send you a gift, that's not where you live. Just, just uh, an <laughs> yeah. yeah. No hate, hate mail can go there. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we can view more here. What does this do? Oh, another pop up. Wonderful. Which shows no additional information. <laughs> shows nothing. Yeah, yeah this thing is, I would, they could probably increase their conversion rate of people who reach checkout substantially mm -hmm. by cleaning this, this checkout up. That wouldn't take that much development work. Dave Sheen, if you're listening, 
buildgrowscale.com. Shoot us an email. We can help you out. Yeah, so this, I don't know why they're pushing this club so much. I'm, I didn't see any benefits so far, but I'm sure they're getting something, some value from it. I would check how many people are using gift cards. If it's only a tiny percentage, that gift card field should be hi hidden behind the link. And same with a coupon code, although I assume people use a lot of coupons here. I wouldn't right. hide but that. It, look, it auto applied the new for 15, but then it's offering me the new for 15. And then as well as the pop-up offered me that same coupon code, but it also auto applied it for me, which is fine. I'm okay with auto applying a coupon, but if you're going to auto apply it, there's no need to promote it any further. Yeah, exactly. That's, they really need to, I mean, they would benefit a lot from fixing that and uh, coupon disaster. So go to standard shipping, choose a method. Mm, the funny thing is you can click a place order already. I think I saw the button below. Your screen is frozen, by the way. I, is it? Yeah. Hmm. We'll blame Sheen. <laughs> Sheen. Yeah, so you, what happens? Try place order. I don't want to place an order. Exactly. It's asking me to pick payment method. So that should not be visible there yet. You want yeah, the so next the step order, to correct. be most prominent. Right now, the most prominent action here is action that you can't even execute. Place order. So the next step should be go to payment or whatever. The, a correct. button right there. And the place order should be grayed out, ideally, in this case. Yep. It should Just shipping like you, address. Once it's submitted, then it should show like shipping options. Then once I pick one, then it shows the payment method, then place order. Yeah. Only so what, show the needed steps, not everything at once. And you should never, again, we're going too deep, but might as well mention it because we might not see it on the next store. You should never have payment methods with the radio buttons and you don't have a method already pre-selected. The most popular method should already always be pre-selected in our case. It's likely the credit and debit card in most cases. It might be Klarna, but I don't know. So it should always be pre-selected. And right. now when you click place order, I'm assuming it's going to take you to another page. <laughs> that is I'm terrible. scared. Yeah, that, then it's going to take me to a payment page. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is yeah. That, that yeah. unnecessary step. Why would you do this? Just expand the field for the credit card <laughs> right there. Oh, man. There, so they attempted to do a one page <laughs> checkout, but they necessarily <laughs> introduced a second page. Um, yeah, they introduced any... a cluster instead. Yeah, it's, it's if I cancel, good. then it goes back to this page. Yeah, so this what... is not to be good. Why did it show that option anyway? Which option? That pop up. What was it? That was me exiting. Oh, go please. So that was me canceling my order. So it was me. Um, where to go back to order page. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I see. No, it's only good for 12 hours when you have 137% sales. Scarcity is a big thing. Yeah. So look at the logic here, place order button when you haven't even entered payment info, but when you go on the next page, it says continue, continue to what? That's very right. bad. They are losing a ton of money on this checkout page. Tons, but then I can also continue shopping. Where's that oh, going to wow. take me? Well, back to, I, I can sort by date. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, we won't even get into this. We'll just stop right there because we could yeah. spend the next, we could spend the next 180 minutes <laughs> taking yeah. the store. So <sighs> that was already um, way too long, but it, it, it's it just was. Fun. I just love going back and forth on this stuff. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and again, everyone that's listening and watching this, you know, we critiqued Sheen.com, but a lot of the, the principles we covered are all generic that can be applied to all stores. And of course, we always suggest testing, but, you know, clarity trumps persuasion all day long. And again, design your site as Homer Simpson can operate it, and you'll watch your conversion rates increase. Yeah, I mean, everything we share here, it's our very educated opinion, so to speak. It's still our opinion, but it's based on a lot of data and a lot of testing on dozens and dozens of stores that we personally worked on. So I would still test it. However, 
for the average store owner, if you see these same issues on your store and you apply these fixes, you should see uh, major improvements. Great. Well, cool. Well, that wraps up our very first episode of e-commerce roast. Feel free, drop some comments, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And Question. until next time. Questions, uh, uh, comments, uh, if you want to yell at us, whatever, just drop it. Absolutely. Below. All is welcome, you know. <laughs> Haters going to hate, lovers going to love. We accept it all here at Build Grow Scale. Yep. All right, until next time, everyone, keep it real. Peace.